Hi, let's talk about non-LTR transposons. So in the previous video, we mentioned there are transposons with long terminal repeat. So this is the one mentioned. This retro transposon has long terminal repeats. Yeah. So with these, your integrase enzymes can, you know, um, put it into the genome the same way that transposase does. So these retro transposons, on the other hand, don't have um the don't have the repeats. So they can't really use the the integrase enzyme. But never mind, the long interspersed nuclear elements called lines. There's a short version, we'll talk about it later. It's interspersed because within the genome is like appearing like that. You know? Not direct repeat one after another, but there are some things in between. And these are autonomous, they can move on their own. Okay? So um, within this, there is the AT rich promoter. So this promoter will promote the transcription of this downstream, and it's it's quite specific to um, RNA polymerase two. Very strange. Uh, I don't know why, but RNA polymerase RNA polymerase two has very has a lot of um, regulatory factors. So that means it will it will it's harder for it to go because you have more checkpoints, more um more you know more red tape. Yeah. That's what regular regulatory factors are. So ORF is roughly the same as roughly the same as your GAC gene. In that it produces um RNA binding proteins. So imagine this your RNA it will just bind onto it and it will form like a capsid sort of like your um, your HIV where you have a nuclear capsid and remember HIV is quite in fact almost uh, identical or related to like this and it's sort of the same as your GAC gene so yeah it will help to stabilize the RNA so that it doesn't just break down because RNA itself can be quite unstable because of the OHN instead of the HN in DNA, the H like um portion, not end, sorry. Yeah, so that's what RNA binding proteins are for. And your ORF gene, uh ORF2, sorry, ORF2 will make the enzymes. Now we don't need integrase because we don't have the terminal repeats. So instead you have nucleases. Nucleases just cut the this uh, um, suffix is for enzymes. So nucleases just cut like nu um, nucleotides up. I think it's endonucleases, but I'm not sure. Some sources say endo, some say nucleases. So this is more general. Just use this. Um, like your Paul gene, this is similar to Paul gene. You have your enzymes here. Are reverse transcriptase and um, RNAs H. So these two are the same as Paul. Yeah, the Paul gene. Only this one is slightly different. Okay, and because it has these enzymes, it's autonomous, meaning that it can move on its own. So it can jump here and jump there without the help of anyone, I mean, of, of any other um, transposons. Yeah, the short version is not autonomous. And this one will help the short version move. The short, the S-I-N-E, the signs. Okay, but let's take a look at how the lines move first. So from here, you're going to have to transcribe it. You make this, the mRNA. Same modifications, poly -A tail and fibrin cap. And then after that, you translate this, you get all sorts of proteins. So over here, these are the three proteins that you will get after translating this frame here. Okay, so now from here, what will happen is the RNA binding proteins from here will bind onto it, they will carry it in the nucleus, and in the nucleus, the nuclease enzymes will look for an AT rich site, most likely a promoter or so, and after it finds it, you'll make a staggered cut, like that. Staggered cut at the AT rich site, and this because the AT rich site is rich in T's and your poly A tail is rich in A's, so it will just bind like that. This is hypothetical 
I mean, this is like just example. It may not be that exact. Yeah. So you're buying here, like this. And now we have a free 3 prime OHN and an mRNA template for you to use complementary um complementary binding, uh, like complementary base pairing, sorry, to copy over. So your reverse transcriptase will do this and will fill in the gap here. By using the free 3 prime OHN, this will be degraded by your RNAs H, and then this will be refilled. Either by the whole cell repair enzymes or by the RNAs H itself. I'm not too sure. So it's much simpler mechanism. And if you take a look, this is the original. So you have your original reading frames. I mean, sorry, open reading frames. ORF says for open reading frames here. And your AT Rich promoter. I think it's, yeah, it's a bit shorter, but roughly, roughly, yeah. It's the same. Okay? So uh, that's about all. Now, for your short versions of it, so there's a shorter version of it. Most likely is when the things at the back spoil, like the enzyme and the ORF, the genes, they spoil. Then you get the short version, I think. I'm not sure, also. Anyway, the short version, the short, the signs, okay, they're, they have two conserved regions. There means two regions that most signs would have. That's why it's conserved. It's the AT Rich Promoter. Alright, and this is a bit special. It uses the promoter RNA polymerase 3. And 3 is used to transcribe housekeeping genes. That means genes that are needed, like almost every cell will use genes for your cell division, cell cycle, cell growth, that kind of genes will use RNA, RNA polymerase 3. So it has less like regulatory factors because you need it, you use it more. So you don't put so many, so so much red tape, yeah. So these are more frequently transcribed, so it's more easily and frequently transcribed than your lines. Lines use number two, okay. And this region is a signal recognition sequence. It's another conserved region. So one thing special about this region is that when you um when you produce the mRNA, okay, it goes into the cytoplasm and you have signal recognition proteins here. That will, rec that will bind onto the mRNA. So SRP9 or 14, you'll bind the mRNA and you'll bring it to the ribosomes. And why doesn't it do that? Because it doesn't have its own enzymes. So it's not autonomous. I mean, some may have, but most of them don't have. So it's not autonomous. And you need to go to the ribosomes where they are making lines and hopefully they're making lines. If they're making lines, the LINE enzymes, the previous one that we saw, the um, this one, the line enzymes from ORF2, if they're making it, then you can steal away the line enzymes. So the ORF1, the binding proteins can bind onto the sign instead, and then you'll take away the enzymes and you'll go, and you'll undergo the same process as mentioned just now. So sort of stealing away the enzymes. Yeah, they call it co-opting the line enzymes, but it's just stealing. So anyway, downstream, or upstream here, you may have other sequences. Is those are variable. So like you may have endonucleases, RTAs enzyme, RTAs enzymes. So your own nucleases, you can create your own staggered cuts and free three prime OHNs. So those that have it are slightly more independent. I'm not sure if they're completely non, completely autonomous. Yeah, but they have RTAs genes. Some of them, most of them don't. I think. And the most common one, the human genome, human genome, is your ALU element. And your ALU element is a sign. S-I-N-E. Yeah, and it's somewhere here. Actually, I don't know where it is. But anyway, it has this site that the restriction enzyme, your ALU1, recognizes. Yeah, so, yeah, just trivia. And it's very common. It's 1.5 billion copies, and it makes up 11% of your, of your entire genome. So that's a lot. Your lines make up 20% and your ALU makes up about 11%. Yeah, so altogether, these non-LTRs, non-LTR transposons actually make up a lot of your genome. Bulk of it is, is a lot of this. Yeah, alright. Um, thanks for watching and see you. The last video is coming soon. Yeah, so be sure to watch it. Yeah, thanks for watching again. Bye.